Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for designers, artists and creators. For those of you who don't know, I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DMB. Today I wanted to walk you through using Twinmotion, which is a rendering software created by Unreal Engine. So I wanted to run you through the basics and almost give you like a crash course in Twinmotion 2020. Okay, so let's jump into the video. Now I'm assuming that you already have your 3D model ready to export. The program that I use for all my 2D and 3D work is Vectorworks 2020, which is a BIM modeling software. So this is the finished model in Vectorworks. And now I'm going to export that to Twinmotion. And Twinmotion accepts Cinema 4D files, uh, FBX, SKP and OBJ. Um, and the one that I use for Vectorworks exports is always Cinema 4D just because I find that it works the best. Okay, once you're ready to import it to the program, simply open the program and click import, then find your file. Now here's a really, really important tip. When the options box comes up, make sure to select keep hierarchy. Otherwise, when you try and apply materials, it will add them to the whole of your model. Okay, so now I just want to walk you through um, a few basic elements before we start adding materials. So first I'm going to set the location of the project and date. This will make sure that the sun direction is accurate. You can see here what happens when I change the time. I'm just going to leave mine on midday because I want it to be full sun in the garden because that's when the clients will be using it the most. There's also other settings for environment like weather, um, like for example here when it snowed. But for this project, um, I'm going to stick with summer because that's when it will actually be completed. And on your left hand side is the toolbar and that houses all your material selection, library, furniture, everything. I'm going to quickly add a tree which is currently in my client's garden and it pretty much dictates the space. So what's cool with Twinmotion is that you can pretty much adjust any element via the settings below. As you can see down here. So before I change anything, I'm just going to show you how to actually navigate within the program. It uses gaming keys on the keyboard. Q for up, E for down, W for forwards, S for backwards, A for left and D for right. And to orbit, all you do is just hold down shift and the middle mouse button. Okay, so then to move or scale or rotate your selected item, hold down this icon to select uh, what you'd like to do. I want to simply move the tree, so I'm just going to leave it on move. Then on the item itself, there will be um, this, these axes that you see. So to move, all you do is just hold down the center and place it to the place that you want it to be. Um, okay, so I also want to place the tree in this corner. And another way to move is to only hold down the corresponding axis. So if I wanted to go left to right, I hold down these. And to go up or down, obviously, you know, click on up or down, that's it. Pretty self-explanatory. Now the tree needs to be much much smaller so I need all I need to do is make the tree less mature so I'll probably put it to about a year old. Yeah that's good I like that. Okay now I want to show you how to add materials onto things. I'm going to apply the brick um, that will be in the conservatory. Another important tip is when you're applying materials, make sure to change your preferences. I'll show you what I mean. Otherwise, the material will just apply on absolutely everything. 
So down here, these two circles, hold down and select apply to object. That will make sure that it doesn't go on absolutely everything. Once your material is added to the surface, you can then change it any way you'd like uh, in the material toolbar. So I'm going to make my brick a little bit more yellow. And now I really like this glossy plastic, but obviously I don't like the color for the glaze. So I'm just gonna simply edit the color for that material. So what I'm going to do now is just add a few more materials and then I'll show you how to make your own material. So I'm going to show you how to make your own material and I'll show you how to do it for this um, bar piece that will be around the hot tub. Now the material that's already there is this kind of wicker rattan type material and I know that Twin Motion doesn't have a material like it already and that's fine because it's really easy to make your own material. So all I'm going to do is go to Google Images and all I'm going to do is download an image that matches the texture that I want. Yeah, I think that one, that one's the most similar. And then once you've got that, you want to create your own new material. So click this plus icon and now you have created a new material. Name your texture so that you can save it in the library for future. And then to add the texture to that, click more under color clear the texture that's already there and then open your new one from wherever you saved it and just drag it onto your surface whoa okay I'm gonna have to seriously scale that down which is fine like anything in twin motion the bottom toolbar is your settings for the item that you've selected so I'm just gonna simply scale that right down maybe 0.5 yeah that seems about right and you can move things around, up or down, however you want. And I'm actually gonna make it a little bit darker to make it resemble the item more. Then I'm just gonna add a glass top. Obviously it's, it's too um, transparent now, so I'm gonna boost up the opacity of it to make it more opaque. And again, make it a little bit more darker. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that now. So what I'm gonna do now is just apply my materials to all of the model, and then I'll show you how to make your own rendered image. Okay, so here we are with the final model with all the materials on. I even added the client's dog <laughs> to make it a bit more personal, uh, which is great with Twinmotion. If you just click on characters, you can add people, pets, anything. And the good thing is that they actually move on their own, which makes it a bit more fluid and realistic. Okay, so now I'm going to set up the angle that I want for the frame that I'm going to render. 
So in order to save the view that you've got or export anything in Twinmotion, you need to click on media, image, and then create image. And that will be the image that you export to render. From there, you can adjust uh, the settings like weather, lighting, and the depth of the view. And I normally just play around with that until I'm happy with everything. And what's great with Twinmotion is that it's really customizable, so you can get it to pretty much exactly how you'd like it to be. Okay, once you're ready, simply click export and choose the file that you want it to be saved in. If I'm doing a still image render, it takes anywhere from about 30 seconds to 5 minutes to render an image. And that's one of the reasons why I love Twinmotion, because it's so quick. And if you've used other rendering softwares, then you know how long it takes to render something. So it is really, really quick. And there you go, that's the final render. Okay, so now I want to show you something really cool. I'm going to make an animation using Twinmotion. It really doesn't take long to make, which is why I usually do it in every single one of my projects. And just like a render, you want to position the camera at the first frame you want to save. For example, I want my uh, animation to start within the conservatory so I'll place my camera there and then save that frame once you're happy with the view that you've got click video uh, create video and that will save your first keyframe and you'll see that that frame is saved in the video now as the first one but in order to take the next shot um, then position your camera you know a little bit more forward to make it look like you're walking along that pathway. To save it, all you have to do is next to it on the right, press create keyframe. And what Twinmotion will do is they'll automatically smooth out that transition so that it looks like you're walking along that path within the animation. So I'm just going to create a few shots. It, it looks a bit speedy at the moment, doesn't it? It looks too quick, almost like you're getting whiplash. So what I'm gonna do is in the top left, you can actually adjust the timing. So at the moment it's 10 seconds um, and I'm just gonna boost that up so that it slows down the whole animation. And just like anything else, you can change the settings to make it anything you want it to be. I'm gonna get on with making the video and then I'll show you how to transition it into nighttime and also add lighting. Okay, so now that the daytime animation is complete, what I'm going to do is create a new keyframe, but simply change the environment to nighttime. So I'm gonna put mine at about 10 o'clock. And make sure that it's the same camera view as the daytime so that the program can automatically transition into night. And then it should show you a time-lapse going from uh, daytime to sunset and then nightfall. 
This might seem a bit weird, but the main reason that I'm doing the night animation is so that the client can see uh, the lighting features within the garden at night time and the ambiance it's going to create. Okay, so it's now to add lighting to the animation. All you have to do is go to library and lighting. It really is that easy. It's pretty simple. All you do is click on the light that you think is suitable and that will fit your luminaire. Um, for example, I have these solar powered up lighters, so I want the light to be pretty straight up. It's currently the wrong way, so all I'm going to do is rotate that 180 degrees so that it's pointing upwards. And again, you can change the angle, the size and the warmth of the light and other features. So now I'm just going to add all of the lighting and I'll see you at the end of this video. And that brings us to the end of this video. Now I do actually have a separate video here on our YouTube channel that will show you the completed animation and how everything turned out. So I'll link that at the end and make sure to check it out. I hope that you liked this video and learned something beneficial from it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I will get back to you. If you like this video, then please give it a big thumbs up because you really do support our channel and please subscribe for more design videos and tutorials. Until then, stay safe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.